Because my eyes have seen the King, I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Amen. Good, good evening and happy Sabbath, uh, brethren. We are very happy uh, to be here on this um, special, this is a special edition this evening of Pastor's Corner. As we, um, we, are, we are aware that um, Grenada, Karakou and Petit Martinique and a couple of, of the Grenadine Islands have been affected by Hurricane Beryl. And um, today we started best to have a... Um, a special program in light of what is happening there. You know, I have in studio with me today some gentlemen. Um, you, I would introduce them in a short moment. Um, they would be here. They would answer some of the questions that are on the, that um, you know maybe out there, and in relations to the church and its response and um, things like that. But um, you know, we are. I am very uh, touched and saddened by you know the things that I would have seen as it pertains to 
the aftermath of of the the hurricane but um we will go into the program on on a happier note you know but um we will keep that in mind and so today with me in studio uh, to my immediate left i have uh pastor enoch isaac and he's the president of the uh, grenada conference of seven day adventists pastor can you just give the people a, a quick greeting welcome thank you pastor <clears throat> best and a pleasant sabbath happy sabbath to everyone all our viewers and listeners um, to Mission Life, it's a delight to be here this evening to share with you. Wonderful. And uh, I, I'm a little away from Pastor Enoch is Pastor Jerome Gordon, and he serves one of his portfolios is community service. Pastor um, Gordon, um, good evening and happy Sabbath. Can you greet the brethren? Good evening, Mr. Moderator, and happy Sabbath to our Beloved brethren and friends who are watching from near and from far, we're happy to be with you this evening to share with you some thoughts and ideas relative to um, our church's response to um, disaster preparedness and emergency management. So may God bless you as we share together this evening. And uh, to my furthest left, um, we have... Uh, Pastor Edward Guillaume, and he's responsible for, well, one of his portfolios is that of the ADRA, you know, ADRA leader. Uh, Pastor Guillaume, good, good um, evening and happy Sabbath to you. Just greet the brethren. Good evening. Good evening to you, Pastor Bess, and uh, happy Sabbath to all our viewers and listeners out there. It's a pleasure to be here as we share with you. Um, some valuable information and uh, we know that after this after this session uh, you will be enlightened and you will be willing to be involved in God's great work thank you very much and so ladies and gentlemen uh, this evening we're looking at the grenadine crisis and uh, the church's response right we know um, Grenada Karaku Pity Martinique, well, Union up to St. Vincent have been affected uh, by the passing of Hurricane Beryl. And right here in the Grenada Conference, um, we want to find out this afternoon what is the church's response. And so before I go any further, let's um, bow our head as we invite God's presence. And then we would begin um, with the discussion this evening. Father in heaven, we come in your presence this evening and we ask at this moment that you would be with us, be with all of the panelists dear god as we speak to the situation that is presently at hand in relations to the aftermath of hurricane beryl and the church's response to it i pray dear god that you would guide this discussion and be with us i pray be with the viewers online in jesus name we pray amen, amen. amen. our viewers i also want you to um share the link as much as possible we are fully much aware that there are some persons who may not have internet service but for those who have it, you know, share it in your different church chats and so on, so that all those brethren can have a view of it, share it abroad, so that those persons who normally view uh, from abroad, they too uh, will um, be able to chip in and give uh, their two pens, as we normally say um, in relation to it. But I want to begin first and foremost, Pastor Guillaume, uh, with you. Um, you are responsible for ADRA, right, Pastor Guillaume? And right off the bat, I want you to just give us an idea of what is this ADRA and the department, what it's about. You know, let's tell the, the people what ADRA um, is about as it pertains to the, that portfolio that you hold. All right, so ADRA simply means Adventist Development and Relief Agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, this department is responsible for not just disaster relief, but also for uh, development um, around our conference, uh, by extension, the union, and so forth. So um, basically, this is the um, function. And uh, now that we have a disaster on hand, uh, the, the hurricane itself was a hazard. Yeah. But now that we have a disaster, mm -hmm. um, then you know, ADRA comes into play mm -hmm. you know, in helping to um, bring relief to those who are affected as far as possible. Well, wonderful. You know, um, Pastor, well, we are all fully much aware that, um, you know, Grenada and the Grenadines are up to St. Vincent. And so, you know, you were affected. But we are speaking in the context of the Grenada Conference here, right? Grenada, Caracu, and Petit Martinique, right? But I'm just saying, you know, um, we were affected by 
um, category four hurricane, you know, burial, right? Um, and do you have any, are you fully aware, Pastor Enoch, of the magnitude of the situation in the, especially in the Grenadines? And, um, and um, do you have any first hand information? That's for all of us. Do, do you have any first hand information? Are you aware of the magnitude and any information from a first hand perspective? Um, thank you, Pastor Bess. I, and again, good evening, viewers. I'm, I'm happy to share, but I, I must say, I am putting out a disclaimer mm -hmm. that I do not claim to have, <laughs> <laughs> to, to know the magnitude. Okay. You see? Yes. Um, now, the, the hurricane affected the mainland Grenada, mm -hmm. and um, I have been in form of some damages that, especially in the northern northern part of the country, yeah. Um, you know, I have not, I don't have first hand information. I have not yet been to the north, mm -hmm. um, but I have had several reports of um, um, destruction to houses, some mm -hmm. some buildings, and and I, I would say major destruction to to vegetation. That's right. how it was reported to yeah. me. Um, as it relates to the Grenadines, I would say. N still not knowing the exact magnitude and the scale, mm -hmm. um, because to do that you'll have to touch on every <laughs> every village, every community. Mm -hmm. But um, we, I would say, I, we I do have some first hand information from the Grenadines, and when I say Grenadines, I'm referring now to both Karakou and Petit Matnik, mm -hmm. because um, we travel there, and and yes. Um, the scale of the destruction is, I, I would say, unthinkable. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen drone foot, footage. Uh, we've seen, you know, in the initial, um, the first few hours, um, there's this journalist who were up there who were sharing. Um, and it looks bad. But I can say to our viewers and our listeners, having been there, having seen, um, you know, with my own eyes, the scale of the destruction in Pity Matnik, that that's our first stop. Um, it 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 is terrible. It is devastating um, to 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 housing and uh, buildings and to to. Uh, I mean, I can't say the, the vegetation because I don't see any. <laughs> I can't remember seeing life as it were in vegetation. Um, so it it was it was a. It was really this um, a destructful hurricane, and and it has caused tremendous pain. Um, and and as we, you know, even as I recall now, I, looking at the faces of persons, I, I must say they're resilient. I, I must say that. Um, but you can see it has caused tremendous pain. Um, so so I would say, Pastor Best, it is it is just heartbreaking um, to 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 see and to experience what the people of um, Pity Matnik and Karakou experienced. And then, of course, when we went on to, um, Pit, um, to Karakou, I mean, it, it's, that is something else. It's the scale of the destruction, um, maybe at the same level of Pity Matnik, maybe a little less, but places like Windward. And, and, and I mean, it's just total devastation. You know, I, I, that's, that's why I look at it, total devastation. It's difficult to quantify. We've heard things like from the government, 95% of the housing, some folks say 98. I don't know, it, it could be anywhere wrong there. It could be 99 too, you know, because it's, it's just total destruction. And, um, and it's, it's, the magnitude is great. This is what I would say. The magnitude is great. It's, all, it's almost, on, I'm, I'm fighting for words to describe it, you see? And that's, that's, that's why I'm even struggling to get proper words to describe the scale of what, what we saw. There in Karakou and Pidimatic. Pastor Gordon. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that um, the president said he's trying to find the words. But when we can't find the words, we just say it's beyond words. You know, <laughs> it's absolutely ineffable. It's it's. I and I want to I want to commend the Grenada Conference and under the leadership, of course, of um, the admin and Pastor Enoch Isaac, because we as a conference we felt that. Um, seeing drone footage is good, but we needed to move with promptitude and alacrity to see for ourselves what exactly transpired 
as the, the hurricane uh, made it rumbled, its devastating passage through the, the, the um, Grenadines. And like the president said, it's absolutely horrific. I, I, we saw 40-foot containers, for example, the, the, the unthinkable, being, um, being thrown. Well, we saw them thrown. We saw, the, we saw them out of position, which means that the, the, the wind, the power of the hurricane was just absolutely um, horrendous. And so I just want, I want folks to know that we felt that seeing photographic and mimeographic pictures when wasn't enough for us. We wanted to be on the ground as part of first, res as first responders to see, to assess, to do a kind of reconnaissance mission that we can fully appreciate what has happened so we can frame our, our um, outreach as we go forward. Yeah, Paz, I, I just want to say here that um, amidst all the, the destruction that we saw, you know, and, and seeing persons, you know, houses without a roof and they are trying to dry their stuff and so on, you know, their little clothing and so on. You know, one thing that really encouraged me is when I heard persons say, thank God for life. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the, the extent of the destruction as a result of the hurricane, many lives could have been lost. Many lives. A matter of fact, I heard someone commented yesterday that if this hurricane um, struck Grenada as it struck, you know, the Grenadines, mm -hmm. we'd have had many people here in Grenada who would have lost their lives, yeah. you know? So I, I just want to express thanks to God. You know, when I heard people, I felt encouraged when they said, thank God for life. Despite what they're going through now, they can still look up and say, thank God for life. Yeah, well, having been on the ground myself, you know, um, one, of the th one of the things um, as it pertains to um, what I saw in Karakou and Pity Matnik is the whole idea of the people, hearing the people, you know, some persons. It, it's really, I mean, <laughs> we may use the word devastating over and over because really and truly it is. Uh, you know, it is devastating. And just hearing the folks, uh, some person saying that they, 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 they wish they could just leave, you know, pack up and just leave Pity Martinique. Some would leave Karakou. And, um, you know, but um, in all of this, as Pastor Guillaume rightfully said, uh, persons would have also highlighted the fact that they are very grateful uh, for life, you know, very, very uh, grateful for life. And, and, you know, brethren, in these circumstances, it is always important to give thanks, even when... Um, Things may seem tough, but we continue with the with the um, um, grenadines. Now you'd have heard the words devastating mentioned over and over. You'd have seen pictures, uh, but from your perspective, gentlemen, any one of you, right? Um, what do you are there buildings um, that seem okay or still standing in your eyesight based on what you would have seen um, from walking through um, Karaku, driving through Karaku, walking through Pity Martinique? Are there buildings um, that are still intact, uh, or, or was every building damaged to some degree? Um, what, what, what's, what's your thoughts on it? Well, of course, there, there were buildings. There were <laughs> very, very few of them. You know, um, I, I can't say that they were all intact, but there were um, a few buildings that had the roofs on still, mm -hmm. and um, um, I think, um, you know, far and few between. I, I would say, um, pretty Martinic, I don't know how many of them, you know, I, I, I can say just a few of them. And then I think I would say the same thing for Karakou. Um, you know, you asked about buildings, um, and then we talk about the destruction. I, as Pastor God mentioned about the 20 foot container, we saw one of the schools and that was, I mean, that was something to pause to think about. Um, one of the shelters, or, um, the Dover Government School and that school collapsed as, as the pastor said to me that you know it's, he is reminded of of what Jesus said concerning the temple he said there shall not be one stone left upon the other so that's a that's not a wooden building that's a concrete structure that has that is flattened 
and I still can't understand it. You know, a concrete structure is flattened, and people were sheltering there, and they just got out. Maybe they saw it moving, I, I don't know, and they just got out just in time to not be there because they would all have perished if, if at the time. And then to add insult to injury, that container for the food container came and then landed on the, pe and on the, on the demolished or devastated building. So I, I am just saying there are few, there are few um, buildings. Now, Pastor, I must say, in relation to our um, churches, we, we had, well, four of them up there, uh, one in Pidimatic and three in Karakou. And um, three of them are no more. Mm. I mean, you mean the Adventist churches? Three, three of the churches are totally destroyed. Yeah, they're, they're no more. They doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Um, you know, the church in his, his borough, it's still there, uh, but it has sustained damage, of course. You know, so major work has to be done to it. But the others, it, it doesn't exist. Mm. They, they, they no longer exist. Um, you know, of course, there are many other buildings. I mean, lots of churches, other churches I saw, they, they, some of them totally demolished. Some of them, um, you know, the roofs are gone. But it's terrible. I, that's probably I can, <laughs> most I can say. I, I, um, I endorse, indeed, what the president said in terms of the absolute devastation and the destruction of the buildings. But um, some of you might not see what I'm going to say as a miracle, but on the Sabbath, I, I want to say an encouraging word coming from what we saw um, in the two islands. At the, the um, Peter Martinique um, building, the, where the church was, not that, well, maybe the same thing at Dover, but I, I saw the pulpit in our little church there in Peter Martinique. The pulpit was moved the hurricane removed the pulpit from where it was and it landed from the church somewhere else and when it landed it was still upright and the books that were on the pulpit were still on the pulpit wet of course drenched but they were not moved then i thought about it and i said but how did that happen a pulpit is moved from one location to the other remain upright in the process and the book still on it great controversy and I think a Bible and a couple of Mark Finley books still on it, wet and open. And um, in my, my thoughts, I said, this is a miracle. So I believe God is saying, irrespective of the devastation and the destruction, the pulpit will stand. The preaching of the word will go on. Of course, that's not eisegesis, but that's just my own reflection <laughs> on what I saw. And I think that encourages me. Pastor, Pastor Gia. Uh, even at Leicester... <laughs> Pastor God, and even at Leicester's um, church, even though it was um, totally destroyed, but the pulpit, you know, remained um, standing. It was still standing there. And, um, you know, Pastor Gordon, <laughs> he actually, you know, stood there and he was preaching from the pulpit. You know, the pulpit did not move anywhere. It stood right where it, um, it was, you know, and... Um, you know, that, again, I consider that as amazing. And um, God is still an awesome God. And amidst the destruction, he has his ways of sending simple messages to all of us, um, even tonight. So, gentlemen, before we go <clears throat> into further um, in relations to, well, hearing the stories, um, what you would have seen, you know, what we would have seen while we were up there, and um, well, the experience that you both just highlighted. Um, before we go into the church's action, you know, as a as a response to the um, to the hurricane, um, what words of encouragement can you offer in times like these? Having seen what you would have um, saw up there, what what encouraging words can you give in times like these to those who are affected, and by extension, those who a viewing and maybe those who are directly affected and those who are secondarily affected, you know, those who are not there but they are affected because it's their homeland and, you know, and so forth, and their families may have been affected. What encouragement can you give in times like this? Yeah, you know, Pastor, I would um, like to say, as you just said, lots of our brethren and uh, the Grenadines will not be viewing this, and the reason being, they have no facility to do so. Yeah. Um, there is no electric electricity, mm -hmm. and um, 
and internet service or data, you know, internet service is just beginning to come through. Mm -hmm. So that's the situation over, over at the Grenadines. Um, it's, you know, I, I know you asked a different question, but I, I'm just saying yeah, to, right. to others that it, it's a very desperate, yes. you know, s situation. Um, but amidst all of that, you know, I just want to reflect upon what Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, uh -huh. even unto the end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, that, doesn't, that doesn't only hold when we're going to preach the everlasting gospel and we quote Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and he said, Lo, I'm with you always. So you're going to preach, so no, I'm with you. No, in every situation, in fact, the psalmist, um, David speaking in, um, in, in Psalms 139, the psalmist says that um, if you take the, the wings of the morning, and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there his hand shall guide you. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So we have the assurance that wherever we are, whatever is our situation, mm -hmm. not necessarily traveling in geography, but we can be in a, you know, one spot, but we in, in a deep hole as it were. Because let me just say, Pastor, because the devil wants to, you know, the devil really wants to um, have us blame God and get us very depressed. Mm. And then for a Christian mm. would say, yeah, you see, look, I'm, you know, my God, look at what is happening. Mm -hmm. So, so I, want to, I want to give us that encouragement that Jesus is saying, lo, I am with you. You can count on me. Mm -hmm. um, even if you've gone through this, or even if you have family members who have gone through this, or in maybe some other situation, because I'm not sure who he's speaking to, we could be in some other situation that, as it were, you're in a deep hole, very depressive hole. Um, just know that, that God is saying, I am with you always. Yes, Pastor, you're saying God is with me in that kind of depressive condition? Yes, I'm saying he's still there. He's guiding you. You know, he's, 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 he's guiding you. As was said before, I, I well... I mean, I can say I still don't understand, but I, I do understand it's the hand of God. But to see what that hurricane did, and only, I mean, every death is, is, is very terrible. But as far as I know, is it a two or three, as was reported? I could be wrong. But, but, but what the hurricane has done to structures and trees, that is standing, and puny human beings got off, generally so. I am saying that was the hand of God guiding life. So, so if God chose not to protect the house and save a life, I am saying it is still the hand of God. So I would, I am saying tonight, trust God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. One of the things that we must keep in mind, folks, is that we have got to embrace reality. Let's try not to have surprises after we would have been warned. The Bible tells us that in the end time, we would see a multiplication of disasters. And that's natural and man-made disasters. Jesus tells us that these things are the beginning of sorrows. We are very early in the hurricane season. This hurricane is on record as being the one that, uh, the first category four in June. And as we transitioned into July, it's the first one that has been so devastating so quick. I am saying to us, September, traditionally, September is the month to remember most of the devastating hurricanes hit us in the Windward and Leeward Islands in, in September. But now we're very early. So I want us to begin to pray and prepare our hearts and minds. Don't be taken by surprise. Embrace the reality that this is the time in which we're living due to climate change and other adverse factors we are likely to see a multiplication of natural disasters. Let's prepare our minds and may our hearts be prepared for the coming of Jesus in the process because things are going to get from bad to worse. But in the midst of it all, God will never forsake his people. Amen. Pastor Guillaume? I just want to leave this text with our viewers and listeners from Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. Um, based on all that was said before, um, Jesus here reminding us the promise has been given. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. We can 
you know, count on the promises of God. And as was said before, he will never leave us nor forsake us, even amidst destruction and disaster and devastation. We can just name the words to describe all that, you know, has happened. But we know that God is still with us. I just want to just take this moment here to just, um, you know, on behalf of all of us here, just extend sympathy. Um, today I was called by one of our sisters, you know, because I, I didn't know. I heard... I just heard about it. I didn't have the time to investigate, but um, I was called today just to um, to be made aware that the young man who died where the tree oh, fell, fell yeah. you know, um, it's a member's son, oh. you know, and um, it's it's a tragic situ situation, and um, our hearts, you know, um, go out to to her, and I want to let her know. That we are here, we are praying for you, and I want to encourage your membership, you know, to really lift up in prayer. It's a hard time, it's a tough time, and um, let us continue to support each other even in these times. Just before I ask the, for the other question as we transition to the church's um, response, I also want to um, take the time to encourage viewers, um, those of you viewing online, you can also place a word of encouragement in the chat. And um, for those persons who are affected by the hurricane, both Grenada, Karakou, and Petit Martinique, and by extension, um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, because they were also affected. So you can place, because we have viewers from all over the world here, so you can place um, um, your, your, your encouraging words in the chat for them. And as I re give my reflection, while I was coming on the boat, coming down on the boat yesterday, um, you know, remember I, I shared it with you gentlemen. It dawned on me that even in the midst of a hurricane, um, we can still see the grace of God, right? Um, and I'm saying that on the context as I, as I reflected on the whole nature of a hurricane. You know, there is the front part, as we would say, of the hurricane, and then there's the eye. And it dawned on me that it is in the eye of the storm or the hurricane. Many persons would have seeked refuge from where they were to safer place, you know? And um, I said to myself, imagine even while a hurricane as devastating as it, as it was or is, um, God has allowed it to have a calm, which is we consider as the eye, so that persons whose lives may have been threatened by the first half of the, of the hurricane can seek safer refuge even in those moments. And I thought that was amazing, you know? Um, and it, 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 it gave me the assurance that in everything God... God in everything that is allowed, God makes a way of escape for his people so that um, we can be safe, you know. And I just, that, that was just, that stood with me and I just gave God thanks and praise. You know, that even during the hurricane, we could still have that period of calmness so that persons who probably would have stayed behind could now move to safer grounds. I want to move on to um, the church's response, right? The, this part of the program, I know many members, uh, you, you want to know what... The church is doing, you know, um, what the church um, responds to the hurricane um, is about. Um, the Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, pastors is, is, is known for preaching the gospel throughout all the world. We, we preach the gospel. We say that's the mission of the church. But I'm going to ask, um, um, in situations like this, um, could we, um, does the church consider um, things like this or our response in situations like this? as part of its mission uh, to assist in circumstances like this. So we have a hurricane and uh, people are in need. Um, is that also part of the church's mission to respond and to help people um, in need? You know, where you're not, you preach the gospel basically through your actions and how you lend a helping hand. Is that part of the church's mission as well? Naturally so, Pastor. Um, I, but I would like to begin my response by reading a passage of scripture mm -hmm. it's um it's look for verse 18 is a passage of scripture we have we, we know very well but i'm reading from the amplified bible it says the spirit of the lord that's jesus speaking yeah after being given the book of isaiah and he read from it he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me mm -hmm. to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to announce release to the captive and recovering of sight of the blind to send forth as delivered those, sorry, to send forth 
has delivered those who are oppressed. And those who are oppressed are those who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. And like how the Amplif mm -hmm. Amplified Bible has it. So yes, Pastor Bess, um, I would say yes again, mm -hmm. you know, so that it, 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 dri it drives home. So, so that's part of the church's mission. That is correct. All right. Yes. Um, the, we, we get our mandate from the man himself, yeah. not, not from the church. Our mandate comes from Jesus himself. And when Jesus was an earth, taking up the book of Isaiah and reading from it, he, he, he gave the world, he gave, he gave the entire Christian fraternity, everyone who would then come after him for mission, what they should be doing, mm -hmm. what we should be doing. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he went on to say a number of things. To preach the gospel to the poor and, and to relieve those who are um, in captivity, captivity of sin, whatever captivity is to release them. And those who are downtrodden, those who are um, widowed, those who are in cal calamity. Yes, um, this is the face of Jesus. Helping people, sharing people, relieving suffering. This is what Jesus, if Jesus was here, you know what? Growing up in, in, in Sabbath school, we used to sing a song, a little chorus. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Yeah. He's a mighty healer, he cleansed a leper. Yeah. When the people saw him, they started, they started shouting. shouting. Everywhere he, he went, went, my Lord, he, he was, was doing, doing good. good yeah. That's right. So what, what Jesus was, was, was doing while on earth was going about doing good. What Jesus expects us to be doing is going about doing good. So when it's appropriate, we preach from the pulpit, we'll, we'll preach under the tent. Mm -hmm. When it's appropriate, we'll go out there and give food hampers. When it's appropriate, we'll give psychological assistance to persons who are depressed. And yeah, anything past anything that when it's appropriate, we'll give hot meals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So is it part of our mission? It is part of our mission. And, and, and we are about doing just that. All right. Pastor Gordon. Well, I, I'm in total endorsement of what um, the Honorable Pastor Isaac said a while ago. And we really and truly, we don't see it as a part of our mission. We see it as the mission mm -hmm. because the gospel is multi-sided. We preach the gospel and that involves rescuing the perishing. It involves caring for the dying. It involves being a voice for the voiceless. It involves standing up for justice and equity and probity. It involves spreading love in, in single parent households and in, in houses where there is father absenteeism. It involves making the society, ameliorating and transforming society with the love of Jesus. So the gospel is not theory. The gospel is a package that involves getting into the trenches getting our hands dirty, rolling up the sleeves. It is said that Christian talk must be backed up by Christian walk. And it is the Christian walk that gives credibility to the Christian talk. In other words, it is what we do that really tell people. Uh, what we do shows people, uh, tells people that we are indeed about the business of the master. And in answer to the question, yes, we do have mechanisms in place. And I'm, I suppose Pastor um, Guillaume is going to speak to Adra. But we do have a well-oiled machinery. We have a community services department that is already developed. There is a representative at every level of the church, the local church, the conference level, the union, the division, all the way up to GC. And we have, we have the mandate of ensuring that where there is a refugee crisis, where there is a natural disaster, we jump in as quickly as we can to do all that we can to expand the kingdom of grace in reaching those who have needs. You know, I once read that it says a walking church is a living church. A walking church is a living church. You know, and um, as Pastor um, Isaac would have read this text here, what came, comes to my mind is that, you know, this is God's disaster plan. Sin would have created a serious mm -hmm. disaster. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are facing all that we are facing now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all because of sin, you know? So even before we 
develop a disaster plan. God has already given us that plan. And so what we are actually doing here is, uh, or what we have done, let me put that way, is activating this plan even further because it has already been activated, but it's activating it even further to reach um, persons out there to meet the needs, as was listed before, so that we can really and truly, you know, show the world that we are following what Jesus has mandated us to do. So, um, pastors, um, you know, um, that's very good. And um, I commend it, the church for also highlighting that um, what we do as a Christian community, it is not just, well, it's preaching the gospel in, in action, right? Um, in the sense that um, preaching is not just standing up in the pulpit, but it is, you know, helping people, you know, and um, making um, headways in, in times like these, you know, so that people can feel relief and um, experience the grace of God even in those difficult moments. But, but as I think of it, Pastor, um, the hurricane came on Monday, right? It came on Monday. Um, we had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, four days, Pastors, have, have elapsed since the passing of the, the hurricane. As a matter of fact, um, when, I, when we were up there, you would have heard persons commenting, um, two days has already passed and the government has not um, given in, you know, they, they felt like they have not felt the impression, but that's a different topic for a different time. I'm saying it's now four days have passed. Um, does the church have any, well, I heard Pastor Gordon highlighted one of the um, response mechanism, but there are persons who are saying that the church is moving too slow in, 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 um, in, um, you know, its response to, to, to such crisis. Um, is the church doing anything, Pastor? What, what is the church doing? Um, so we have those, those comments. So I want, I want to get it, you know. Um, what, what is the church's response in relation to it? Okay, um, Pastor, let me, <laughs> let mm -hmm. me begin. Of course, people, of, um, people have all kinds of res um, responses to... to um, mm -hmm. Disasters, or you know, when things happen, people have the various view as to how um, things should be. L let me begin by saying I want to thank um, members from Grenada. I want to thank Black Sister Esther from the North, Sister mm -hmm. Edlin John, um, who um, collected breadfruit, mm -hmm. burial, threw down lots of breadfruit mm -hmm. and mangoes in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Yes, in St. Patrick's, and. They, these were collected, yeah. You ask, you asking what, yeah. what are we doing? Okay, so breadfruit that that fell in St. Patrick's were collected. I mean, lots of them, Pastor, mm -hmm. bags of them, bags of mangoes, and were brought and distributed. Fruits were brought up mm -hmm. to Carico and distributed. Mm -hmm. um, so the work has begun. All right. The work has begun. But Pastor, let me hasten to say, mm -hmm. we are not in this business to... This is not a show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God will not ask you, did GBN pick up your work? Okay. Did, did CNN pick up your work? No. God will ask you, did you do what you should have done mm -hmm. for the list of my brethren? Mm -hmm. So there are persons out there for the cameras and to make glare and, 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 and to comment on Facebook and for others to come. We're not in that. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we are not in that. But well, let, me, let me even singularize it. I am not in that. Go ahead. You see? Yeah. We are not in that as a church and I am not in that. Mm -hmm. So for persons who figured, uh, well, you know, and that's our opinion. I'm not even upset for someone expressing an opinion. Pastor, you're moving too slow. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I do not want, Pastor, best, I do not want to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. I do not want to go to a doctor, a medical doctor, Pastor Gim. I come to the doctor. I sit down. The doctor look at me and start writing a prescription to give to me. I would want the doctor to diagnose, have some discussion with me, diagnose my yeah. problem, right? Do my blood test and what have you, what have you, and then come to a conclusion based on what the doctor has found. Yes? So the disaster has taken place and... Um, we went. We know what disaster is about. And of course, um, you, know, you know, but 
understanding the situation and understanding the dynamics, and then the mechanism has been put in place, and it's it's it's, it's, it's not being rolled out. But I, I I've seen I've heard comments about personal there in, on Facebook and what have you. You know, um, we are not, we are not there for sure. This mm -hmm. is God's business. So, mm -hmm. so I do not want to be running out there um, for GBN to pick me up or some other <laughs> news to pick me up to say, um, Pastor Isaac or the Adventist Church is doing this. No, no, heaven is recording. Is recording what has been done. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I I'm just stating it here that um, and, and there's always I'm not even suggesting that our pace is the best pace. You know, there's always what you call you know. Um, um, you know, the best, best response um, in, in any situation. But I'm, uh, I am saying for persons who believe and is thinking that um, we should be there, you know, um, day one or what have you. I mean, we wanted to be there day one, couldn't get there because, of course, there was no, there was no mechanism or, to, you yeah. know, to get there. Yeah. But so I'm just making all of this, this um, assess the situation, talk to persons, understand it, and now the church is beginning to roll out its um, program. And it's going to be rolled out well, Pastor. I can tell Praise you that. God. It's going to be rolled out well. Praise God. Um, I, just be, oh, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Well, I just want to um, add to the president's comment by saying that um, there are those who like to spectaculate themselves. And there are those who want to gain all kinds of mileage out of this thing by running to say, okay, yeah, I was there. And the whole idea is to spectaculate themselves. I think that a church like ours has to be a responsible church. The president made it clear, and it's true. We were trying to get in from the moment we, the, the thing passed. We were trying to get in. And it was even difficult. Even when we got there, it was I mean, some arrangement. We, 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 it was risky, <laughs> the trip going up <laughs> at the time we did. You know, it was a risk to our lives. But we felt as soon as possible, we should be on the ground, in the trenches, seeing um, what we can do to build the mechanism from the ground up. So it's a bottom-up approach that we can touch the lives of those who are in need and do it in a way that is sustainable. Because there are those who, are, who take the comet approach. They, they come and they glare, they look like they look sparklingly bright and disappear. We want to take the, the approach where our impact is felt in a sustainable way. So we build from the ground up so we get into the trenches. And brothers and sisters, that's what we have done. We have been there we have been to the trenches, and as we speak, the mechanism, the, the, the good mechanism, the efficacious mechanism is being, um, is being, being developed and will be, will be felt in a tangible and powerful way in the Grenadines because we're taking a sensible approach to this thing. Go, go ahead. I, I, just want to, I just want to add here that, you know, while there are those who will criticize what we do, you know, I, I saw in Karaku and Petit Martinique how appreciative the members that we went to look for. And, and people you from know, the community. How grateful they were. You could have seen the smile. You could have seen, you know, mm -hmm. um, how they came out. And, 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 you know, they were very delightful because of our presence, you know. And um, Pastor, you know, many persons don't know the struggle that we went through. You know, when we, yeah, when we went there, Pastor, I mean, Pastor Garden alluded to <laughs> something there. I mean, the boat ride in itself, you know, six hours on the sea is not an easy thing. Correct. You know? And, and the uh, type of boat as well. Yeah. Sure. One yeah. of the things I said I would never do is to, is to, is to ride on a, um, a small boat. Fish, yeah. You know, those little fishing boats and so on. <laughs> you know, see me in this, in this little boat, you know, and so forth. So I'm saying here that, you know, while... While some persons will criticize the plan, you know, there are persons who, will, you know, who are appreciating what we are doing. And um, also, you know, when the members, we, you know, we slept in a, on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a member's home, you know, I mean, all so of sure us. It wasn't the five-star hotel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, going without a shower. And, and, Going and without a show, yeah, yeah, you know, was, just to yeah. meet the needs, yeah. meet the needs, Pastor, you know. And, um, you know, we have to say those things here because there are some members who feel that we are not doing enough, but everything takes a process. Yeah. You know, just like other organizations, you come and you assess. You can't just jump in and just, just do things vai vai. It's always a process. And, and 
and it's it's important um viewers to uh, to let me just say in the onset of any disasters emotions naturally run high everyone is looking for a solution you know and so on and so forth but i've learned that we should also appreciate the whole concept of assessing before we go in to give um, assistance. Because when proper assessment is done, now some may find, yeah, the church moving slow and all of the various negative comments that could come. But you see, when a proper assessment is done, and that is why I, I think we should show appreciation. And by the way, this is not to make heroes of those persons who went to Karikou. It is just to appreciate rather the work, the grown work that is being done so that greater help and assistance can be rendered uh, to the members. Because, uh, for example, um, those who were there in Karakou, um, they would have seen many things, you know, um, a lot of things coming in, and various organizations are going in in the initial, and they are giving, but of the same kind. But then there are other needs outside of the kind that they are giving that are not being met. And so... In disasters, one would truly appreciate or should appreciate the whole concept of assessing because it gives you a better response mechanism. So I, I think the approach that was taken by the church um, is one that should be commended um, and pastors for um, even put placing your life on the line to go up there to just conduct that assessment. I think um, it should be appreciated. Yeah, and, but Mr. Moderator, I want to say real quick that... Um Several years ago, I was trained in um, disaster management. Mm -hmm. And the, the disaster is something that has to be managed. So you, you, you hear that there has been an earthquake and everybody runs with food and water. And before you know it, there is an overabundance of a certain kind of things. Um, it ought to be done systematically and carefully with a lot of thought so that you don't, you don't minister to one area to the detriment of another. The, 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 the management, the even disaster must be managed. The approach must be managed. And it is a sensible and responsible organization that, that goes in, not, as a, not with a knee-jerk reaction to be impulsive, but to ensure that the situation is properly assessed and that the right type of help is given in a way to make a sustainable difference wonderful and um by the way we have some pictures that would be shown to you um as we go through the program um as we go through the special been, edition you know being shown. Yeah, right so the pictures are being shown wonderful in in between Pastor, I just, just say a little something go here. ahead it's not just meeting the immediate needs mm -hmm. but they are long-term needs mm -hmm. so while 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 the community well for example let's say Carrick one pity Martin will be flooded with food and water and whatever else. That's meeting the immediate needs. Mm -hmm. But we have to also look at the long term. So as Pastor mentioned here, you know, the sustainable, you know, needs of the persons who have been affected. Because we could have a glut, let, let me put it that way, a glut um, of of stuff uh, you know, that is brought to the to the to the to to Carrick one pity Martinique. And then after that, what happens? Well it should be told, um, from being there, we, we saw some stuff that we, we wouldn't even mention here, you know, um, as is happening. And um, all these would help and guide the way we go forward in doing stuff. So it's, it's important. But let me just move on. Um, let, let's just move on. Um, so I'm, I want to ask, Pastor Guillaume, I can probably begin with you. Um, it was posted in the chat earlier. Um, someone is asking, um, what help would Adra give or, if, or is Adra prepared and ready to give any assistance that is that was posted there but the question is um um do we have outside help you know what about outside help um do we know of anyone who is willing to assist and how will they assist right so i, I just want to start with you and then um the others can chip in yeah well i would say um i was really impressed with the number of calls to help from outside mm -hmm. um not just from um, other organizations, but even the higher organizations. So from the Caribbean Union, from the Inter-American Division, you know, um, they are willing to, to assist. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we have, um, uh, for example, 
this this weekend from tomorrow we have a team of missionaries who are coming in mm -hmm. and um they are coming in with with equipment mm -hmm. you know like uh, and supplies mm -hmm. like the um chainsaws and 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 um tap tarpaulin and so yeah, on and, and lights and, and so right so they are coming in with all of those things um to assist a matter of fact that wasn't what they were coming to do they mm -hmm. were coming to do things like health fears and so forth but because of the hurricane they have shift their focus mm -hmm. you know in communicating with me shift their focus so they are coming in now to to assess to not not just to assess but to assist mm -hmm. um in the in the recovery process so they are, they, we have help we have a lot of help from outside and um it, you know it's be good for us to you know cooperate with those entities so that we can you know help with the whole uh, recovery process okay and in addition mr moderator we we have to remember that in the in the time of a natural disaster people get into what we call survivor mode their their psycho emotional state is affected we have seen well COVID 19 is just um, a year or so behind us and we saw that divorce rates increase during during um COVID. We saw child abuse increase. Just about all the psychopathologies increase during COVID. So one of the things that we must provide in the event of a disaster is psycho-emotional support, pastoral counseling, meeting people, um, people's mental health, because there is, we saw indications of that in the Grenadines when we of went course. up there. There are indications that people are going to need very serious psycho-emotional support. And that's why our church cannot be helter skelter. We can't follow folks and just just try giving water, water, whatever. We have to take a more mature, more responsible approach. And I'm saying that one of the things that must be done for them is to provide psycho emotional support through pastoral counseling and whatever other means that we will put together. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I would want to add. Pastor, you ask outside help. <laughs> There's a lot of help, Pastor. Mm -hmm. A lot. And um, as was said before, this is not, I'm not sure we are understanding. The magnitude of the, or the scale of the destruction is not about next week and next month and next year. The economy of the place is decimated. Mm -hmm. This is a, you know, pretty madnik, Carico Winwood, fishing. The boats are, have been taken and dumped way inland, smashed. It will, they, 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 they can't, lots of the roads are blocked in, we know it, with, with boats, mm -hmm. not, not trees, yeah. boats, and they are still blocked. You can't, it's, they're impassable. And, and smashed up boats, it will take a long time past. So, the, so even giving, it's not about giving first and giving now, it's yeah. giving, because yeah. there wouldn't be any, I saw, I lived in Winwood for a little while, when, many years ago, when I passed there and, and the main supermarket there, Malik, is, is in, I mean, nothing, you know? So I, I'm saying, it's not that you just had a roof uncovered and you get back to business next month. No, no, it, 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 it's a long haul. Because they, they I mean, Karaku is not known for agriculture per se, but the folks do, their stuff. Mm -hmm. but. There is nothing like that. So I'm saying things will be needed for a long time and help is on, on its way. Um, you know, um, all or we have 10 fields with the Caribbean Union. I have, my phone has been inundated. That, that's with calls, but, you know, good calls. Mm -hmm. All my fellow presidents through the Caribbean Union, folks from North America have been calling and I have been, that's just a work for itself. Believe me, that's a work for itself. Sitting and responding to all of this um, um, persons who are and helping to guide and give instruction as to how to do what to do. Um, so there is so, and that's why I'm stressing that running there and being first and, and the media picking you up. That's nothing. It's it's the folks who will need us would need assistance for a long time, and um, so you have to put up a structure in place and 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 to ensure that it rolls and it rolls well. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm repeating yes. Or Caribbean brothers and sisters. Um, is reaching out. Um, today, the calls were just coming in. Pastor, you're doing this. What? Uh, yes, and the list was circulated with them. Um, personal effect items. So it's not only <laughs> not only rice and canned beans and water. No, 
the the folks have nowhere to go. No, nothing, nothing. It's you know, it's mashed up. So, so, so. I mean, you know, um, one one sister said to me, um, when the check, the roof remained on the house, pastors. The roof remained, but the windows were smashed. But in their bedroom, there's a mattress that does belong to them. Mm. And their bed and their mattress, not there. No, the mattress is not there. It's gone. So the, I'm saying, it's, you, you imagine the, what it did to supermarkets and stuff? People might say, well, food was there. It was. Where have those food gone? Gone. Mm -hmm. You know, gone. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's no more. Um, so because the wind did some things with it. So I am saying, yes, there's a lot of help on the way. Uh, it's, coming, it's, it's coming in a very coordinated way. And, um, and, and we will be able to help. And I mean, I say we as a church, we're talking about the church, but the government is doing its bit. Um, we're not here to speak for NADMA, but, but they're doing their bit, and we see evidence of that. But I'm saying as a church, and by the way, let me just be very clear here, brethren. When we say we, uh, of course, we will be taking care of our brethren, but we are taking care of the people of, of, of Caricom Petit Correct. Um, the, the people. And let me also say, let me also say, the hurricane did affect Grenada to a lesser extent. So yes, persons who are in need in the northern part or any part that was affected will also get help. But we, we, you, you, you heard us speaking much about um, the Grenadines um, because that's the greater impact. But yes, so if you're in St. Patrick's or in some other um, parish and you're affected and you have to get help, you will also get some help. Yeah, so um, be... be, be be mindful of that as well. Mm -hmm. You will also get help. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's important to note, right, um, that the church has things and um, our regional partners and outside um, givers, they are on board and um, they are being coordinated. So that's very good news and um, we want to commend the church uh, for that. Um, pastors, Pastor, um, since you're there, I just want to ask you, Pastor Enoch and then the others, of course, um, can, can chip in. Is there any way for no, there are people viewing. Um, I saw one person placed a comment a while ago, and you know, but um, I'm asking you the question Is there any way for persons to donate funds to this to assist this cause? So, people want to donate, right? Some may choose they want to give funds so that the church would decide how best to utilize the funds in its response to. Uh, those who are impacted um, in Grenada, Carico, and Petit Matney. Um, can persons do so? And um, um, how can they do so? Okay, sure, Pastor. You asked about funds, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, an I'll answer funds and food. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first of all, um, we're working, well, again, the church is very organized. The church is very organized. Right now, we are at the headquarters. I'm referring to those who are here in Grenada. So if you want to give um, a mission or first, Yes, our first official um, boat will will deliver its will leave and deliver its stuff on, on Thursday coming past. Praise the Lord. On Thursday. Praise the Lord. Yes. You um so if you're within the Grenada, um any of our Adventist churches will begin the collection for the next few days. Right. Because the, the boat will be loaded by either Wednesday or Thursday morning right. and, and will go up mm -hmm. and deliver our first um Response yeah. minus the breadfruit and the mangoes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> our first response. So persons can can contact anyone for churches. That's I'm I'm referring to those who are here in Grenada, and 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 contribute any 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 anything that you think it's um is needed um that you would like to send and and we, we do have a list but I'm just saying for our members that there is a list um that you that can guide you. Um, not, not only water, not only um, beans or what have you. There's a list that can guide us in that respect. And um, so coming to the churches. Funds um, for persons online. Yes? For persons online. We, right in the chat, I think you can, you can see it. You can see it, but I could just, um, it's, it's right there. Okay, it's right there. Um, but yes, you can go, uh, you know, I can just talk about it. You can go to our website, Grenada. GrenadaAdventist.org. Even type in Grenada Seven Adventist, you get it too. Just by typing in that, because I, I've been checking it myself. So you can just type in, and when you get into the website, you see Give. You click on Give, and there you'll see 
a number of things. Now, let me just say to you, you might say, okay, Pastor, we didn't see, we're not seeing Caracol and Pity Martin. No, you wouldn't see that there because it was, that was, that was a given platform that was already um, established. Mm -hmm. So you'll see Tight, you'll see Offering, you'll see St. George's School, you see um, Charles Memorial Home, you see the campsite. But very importantly, you'll see other. Right at the bottom, you will see other. So that other, you click that and you type Karaku or Pity Matnik and be assured, I'm giving you that assurance, be assured, you click Karaku and Pity Matnik, what have you, or Relief for Karaku, that's where it will go. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, no misappropriation of funds. Yes? So I'm saying online, this is how you can give. You go to the website, you, you see give, you click give, and there the whole list there. And I'm saying you wouldn't see Caracol and Pity Martin because and it, I, I don't think it could be added. I can I stand corrected when the technicians can help me on that eventually. But because it's already organized that way, um, we have to remove one or two to get in others. I think it has five of them there already. So therefore, so all you have to do, you click other. I'm stressing it because some folks will say they want the money. Yes. So you click in other and, and then you write Caracol, Pity Martin or Grenadines and you give your mount. You, Continue and you say the amount from your card, what have you, give the details, and your money is well on its way. Of course, if you are here in Grenada, um, well, of course, if you're here in Grenada, you can do that too. But if you want to, you know, someone for seniors don't know that, and how do I drop off money? You can, you know, you can contact your pastor, contact your, your church treasurer. Um, you can come to the conference office here and to the accounts department when it's um, from on Monday and, and give that way. I mean, some folks just like to do the old fashioned way you come in and bring in money. Or you give money, make sure you get a receipt for your money, by the way. You know, if, if it's through the church system, you get a receipt, they will give you a receipt. If you come at the office, you'll get a receipt. And of course, if you're online, it's, it's obviously you, you, get, um, you, you get a receipt. Um, so this is how you give. I mean, we want you to give, right? We want you to give, but that's for money. But I'm saying for the food stuff, yes, they drive our members. <clears throat> you, you'll begin to hear the announcement from tomorrow. And, and, and please respond. Um, so that our first mission to um, to deliver stuff will be uh, uh, you know a very successful one. But Pastor, um, there's a there's a, a comment in the chat, and I think you might be the most fitting person to respond to that comment. So the comment is: If you are sending a barrel from the U.S., can can you um, can it be sent? to the Adventist church to be distributed. So if people are outside, you know, for because this platform serves um, a wide population, both in local and in the diaspora, and there are persons who may want to send barrels, right? I, I, I assumed that people are already poised to pack their barrel and send it. Um, what address or, or can they do that? Give some guidance or instructions in relation to that. Um, yeah, it's something very important question, Pastor. And we are currently working through this because um, I was made aware today that <clears throat> I guess it coming down, we, you know, from the, from the Grenadines, we didn't pick up that. But uh, an announcement was given by NADMA stating that all relief should be named NADMA, um, uh, you know, so that you will go through relief. But if, if, that, is, if that happens, then it goes to NADMA um, Story Center. So... What we um, are working through with NADMA, we have to finalize that. But what I would say now, the name should be the Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists, Adro Department. Well, you know, that, those, those no, the Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists, um, Adra, you know, uh, you could spell it out, Adventist De Development um, Relief Agency, but Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists. Now, we have to work with NADMA, we have to fine, fine tune with NADMA, um, um, because they did indicate uh, upfront that um, all relief should come through NADMA. Mm -hmm. But we are saying we've been um, an establishment, and that's what we do, and we are known for that, that kind of charitable work. So we are working through NADMA, but even before we finalize it with NADMA, I'm saying that you, you want to send a barrel? Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists. Um, ADRA. ADRA, Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists. Which, you can put both of them. But um, or you can Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists, and we will do the mechanics and work out with NADMA how we'll do this. But um, this is what the advice we're giving pr persons as it relates to to sending stuff um, through the Seven Adventist Church, which um, we we which we normally do, normally receive, Pastor, and that's 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 we are not no we are not novice in that area. Correct. The church is very 
verse in that. I'm not sure if anything Pastor Game wants to add to that matter. Pastor? I think it's well said by you, Pastor. So, we, so, yeah. so the person sent it to the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, yes. right? And um, they can put Adra on it, right? And um, it would get to us. And as you rightfully said, the church um, bodies and so is not novice in that area. Pastor Gon. Yeah, and I, I know that our people are compassionate. And you might be going to the various congregations on the mainland tomorrow, and you have something, you got something from Western Union, and you monogram whatever they means, and you, you're going to church with it tomorrow. It is okay for you to write an envelope, indicate on the, the slip that this is for the disaster relief um, um, program for the Adventist Church. You could indicate that. So as early as tomorrow, if you want to walk with some donations of whatever sort, if it's financial or whatever, indicate on your tithes envelope what it is for don't go back home with it send it in it will get to the headquarters and it will be distributed as per normal wonderful. to the folks wonderful and um so that that is well said and um thank you gentlemen for your response now being on the ground in Karaku, um we you you would have said it from it came from the desk here that the assistant needed is beyond just food stuff. Now, I know there are persons within our church um, who may be willing to volunteer, you know, their, 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 their skills, their time, you know, to, to, to assist in, you know, hands-on, you know, boots on the ground. And um, is there a mechanism or is there a structure? What, um, how can these persons um, who may be willing to volunteer and in operation like this, what can they do to, let's say, register the the interest to volunteer? And then how, what's the process going forward from there? Again, Pastor, uh, as was said, it's not a vaiky vai thing. Mm -hmm. It will be done in a very methodical way. Mm -hmm. So yes, the answer to the question is yes, volunteers will be needed. They will be needed. In fact, some volunteers will be needed as early as maybe Wednesday or Thursday mm -hmm. when that boat is going up. Right. You know, volunteers will be needed. Um, but as we go along, volunteers will be needed. How it will be done? Did you say register online or register with the churches? Yes. And what type of volunteers? All of that will have to be worked out mm -hmm. because um, you will need carpenters. Um, you know, you, yeah. you, 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 yeah. you'll need, as, as yeah. those of us who were here <clears throat> around during Ivan and what happened in Grenada, it's the same. But it... It's the same thing that will be needed, but if we are very um, careless and carefree about it, um, or maybe a better word would be ad hoc, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't serve the purpose. So it will be done. Volunteers will be needed. In fact, I had a gentleman come today and is offering his services. So yes, it will be needed, but we have to put a structure. But if, if we don't put a structure, we'll end up being chaotic, and we don't want to be chaotic. So volunteers will be needed, and um, I, I repeat to myself, as early as probably... Um, um, Thursday, um, but before that, the next few days, um, you know, you know what type of volunteers, if it's needed, um, of course, needed to load the trucks and, and the boat and probably to go up there, maybe to um, do some temporary work on, um, on, the, on the main building there, maybe uh, two carpenters will be needed, but, you know, we, we have a mechanism of reaching persons, so um, I know persons have to know in time to plan, but I'm just saying we, we will need volunteers. And we, we're just asking you to stay tuned as to, um, you know, to make yourself available, you know, a few hours, a few days, maybe, um, to, to ensure. For example, going up to Karakul now, or the Grenadines, you can't just send a whole set of folks. You know, they, some of them can't sleep the way I slept. Yeah. <laughs> no, they can't bunk. So, so they can't, because they, you know, they, maybe they've never been pathfinders. So, so you have to put a mechanism in place. And persons who can go understand, that, hey, if you go, that will be a condition there. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to function because you're going to help. There's no luxury now. Mm -hmm. you, you see? And some persons can't function that. So all of that will have to be look, looked into. Um, but to answer the question, there will be need for volunteers. And they you will accept lots of volunteers. I, I just want to go back one to the question before, Pastor. Um, because it just dawned on me, this platform doesn't just is not just um, church members who look at this program. Now I know you said communication would be given um, via the church tomorrow in relations to the the giving, the donations, and 
Um, but if someone here, probably they don't go to church, um, you know, but they, they follow us online, um, is there a day that they can come to give in their stuff in time for, for Thursday? And, and, you know, just give a little guidance okay. for persons in that... In that um, in well, as I said, of course, if it's monitor, you, you yeah. can give it online. If, if mm. not, you, if you're not relating, because, of course, we're, not, we're speaking on the World Wide Web and persons are listening from all over. Um, and you're not speaking to our members only. But if persons want to donate, want a charitable organization to donate, I'm saying the church can, can be the off head office here at Granba or any of our churches, um, you can reach out to and they will guide you. But you want to drop off something? As early as Monday, the office is open as Monday. Wonderful. So you can just come in here at, at, at Granba and drop off what you, you, know, you want to drop off because... Um, that would be a collection point as well. So the church is a collection point because we are an organization. We have churches, and that's how we filter through information through our churches. The church is like, you know, yeah. sub offices in a sense. So, yes, through the churches and um, the head office, of course, um, yes, persons can walk in and say, I would like to donate that, that, that amount of money. You go to the accountants, you'll be guided there. They'll accept your, your donation, they'll give you a receipt. Um, if it's if it's tang tangible, <clears throat> you know, food stuff, then yes, someone will accept it, put it away, and and for the time of when it would leave for the uh, the packing. So that that could be done, and um, there should be numbers now. Um, um, I Pastor God, and I think your number will be on the screen. Pastor, um, your community services leader, Pastor Guillaume, your head of Adra, your number will be on the screen. So there'll be some numbers that you can reach. Um, myself, my number will be there. So there there are some numbers. And maybe we'll add others, but, but you know, persons can reach us and then we can direct them to other persons. I, I'm sure you may want to say some, something else about that, reaching, reaching persons. Yes, and I, I would like to add, gentlemen and our listeners, that as far as community service is concerned, as far as Adra, the Adventist Church as a whole, they, whatever donations that we receive it will not be distributed along denominational lines. We want to make that abundantly clear. We are not going to the Grenadines to give this stuff to Seventh-day Adventists exclusively. We don't believe in that. Our hearts are reaching out to everybody. Whatever your denominational or political persuasion, that's unimportant right now. We are addressing needs, whatever shape, whatever form the needs take. That's what we're going after. We are ministering to people. We don't care what your stripe, what your color is. We want to reach you in Jesus' name. All right. Um, the, the question, Pastor, it, as it pertains to working along with the government of Grenada, is there any collaborative efforts that would be made with the government of Grenada in addressing um, this situation? So um, is the church poised and ready to work along with the government to address this, this situation? Yes, yeah, so the, the church is not, I mean, while the church, we, we are doing our part. We are yeah. doing our part as a church. And, um, and uh, as was said before, this is not about politics or, right. or any other thing. You know, it's not any subtle um, motive that we have. We are here to help with the, you know, with the relief efforts. And um, we have been in communication with, with NADMA. Matter of fact, on my phone, I, ha I have a NADMA chat. Mm -hmm. So I see everything that happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to, you know, um, relate some things to the president, you know, on our trip up so that we could be guided accordingly. We would not have to, you know, go overboard with some things, but we can be guided accordingly. Um, added to that, we have um, three or four members who are, in including myself, who are members of, of NADMA. Mm -hmm. So when meetings are called, you know, we go to those meetings mm -hmm. because, for example, um, before the hurricane came, we were at that, at that meeting the Saturday evening, mm -hmm. you know, um, even before sunset because they called the meeting at that time and, um, you know, they were able to brief us. So coming out of that meeting, I was able to, we were able to have the ADRA board and the ADRA board was briefed as to what took place at the NADMA meeting and, um, Subsequently, we called our pastors at a meeting, and, and they were brief. So there, there is the collaborative um, efforts between us and 
um, the authorities, the governmental authorities, NADMA. Um, so it's not anything that we are trying to do in isolation, you know, pushing, you know, pushing the, the authorities away, but we are working in, in collaboration with them as far as it is, as is possible. Wonderful. And Pastor, as you respond to it, just establish why um, that is important. Why it's important, Pastor, because of course NADMA is the official, is the government, the, the country has a government. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and NADMA is the agency, the arm of government that deals with relief, or, uh, you know, yeah. disaster and relief. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's the agency. And therefore, any other body, NGOs, I mean, sensibly, you have to co collaborate. So we are, as Pastor Guillaume said, we are collaborating with NADMA. And um, that's why I said before, NADMA did indicate that um, the, through the press release that all, all relief should be coming through. And we, in dialogue, we've started the dialogue with NADMA and we'll um, continue so that um, understanding we have been in this business a very long time and, and, and the authorities is fully aware of that. And, and um, so we're working with them to ensure that, um, you know, every, every law there is a, we call this cop out, you know, um, that, is, that is every rule that is established. Um, so so we, we will work with NADMA to ensure, and, and they, NADMA is aware of the church's response in disaster. NADMA is fully aware of that. So we have to collaborate. Yes, we have to collaborate. Pastor, you're on the floor, and I just want to address a question that I saw in the chat. Um, maybe I should ask Pastor Gordon, as it falls under um, one of the departments that you hold. It says, what about the funds from community service and the poor fund? You know, we have the needy poor offering, and um, can these funds be used to help? And, and uh, Pastor, I just want to add here, because it was said earlier yeah. in the chat, you know, um, the gathering well, yes, yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, I... I, I read the question and I, I was inspired to say that um, we need to remember that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has always been involved in poor relief right. and in reaching out. So for us, hurricane burial has not incited us to begin to reach out. This is something we do all year round. We have a well-oiled machinery. We have an in-gathering program, and funds from the in-gathering program go right back into helping the poor, the unfortunate, those who are in need, those who want to do surgery, don't have enough money for education, health care. So we have been doing these things already long before, before the system came off Africa and coast and, 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 and rumbled across the Atlantic. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Grenada Conference, has been involved in this type of work, this, this mercy work, if you please, this work of reaching out. So what we're doing now, what we're putting together, will only complement that which we have been doing on a sustainable basis. So we will be using funds, community service funds, uh, funds from in-gathering. A percentage of that will be going into this because that is what we do. This is, we will just continue. We will just add to and uh, move forward because we have already had this thing rolling 20, 12 months of the year. Yeah, let, let me just add, um, brethren and folks, there is, there is already a problem. Yeah. Be part of the solution. Let me, let me look in the camera and say, it. there is a problem. The hurricane passed, there's a disaster. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't sit there and try to, you know, create problems by i'm saying that because there's a tendency on social media you know for folk there, <clears throat> there are some folks who believe they can't even see on social media so they, they would say anything they would blast anyone say anything and think it's okay it's not okay get involved by contributing by helping by volunteering um, and not just getting sidetracked by just talking a lot of stuff that does not make any sense. Please, I, I think I need to say that because um, there is a problem. People need help. And, and by the way, let me just add, the, the funds will be needed, lots of it, because after the food is on the water and people said, you know, the homes need to be rebuilt, 
So lots of galvanized shooting, lots of ply and wood need to be purchased and, and so we can give persons a system because even if persons, some persons may have some monies they can buy and then they need the help to put it on and then some persons just don't have it. And um, so the funds there would, when the funds come, then we'll be able to help, you know, buy like we did in Ivan. After Ivan, lots of monies were given, materials were purchased and then, so then we can distribute materials and then the, the skills men could go and assist persons. So I, I'm just saying, I'm, I think I'm impressed to say, be part of the solution. Don't, don't be part of the problem. The hurricane was already an issue and, and the persons, persons in need don't need us to just be throwing words here and there. Let's just be part of the solution. I beg of you, people, and, I beg and of you. Thank may you. I say one, one more, Mr. Moderator? May I say, folks, long after Hurricane Beryl is forgotten. The Seventh Day Adventist Church, ADRA, Community Service, the Executive Committee of the Grenada Conference will still be reaching out and doing what we have always done. Wonderful. I saw in the chat um, Sandy's Plumbing Inc. was volunteering the, the, the service. I, I just want to say um, to Sandy, Dave Sandy, um, maybe what you can do is the numbers that were placed on the screen, you call one of those numbers and um, you know you exchange contact so that when that time reach, uh, they would be able to reach out to you and, um, and um, you know, um, tap into that, that um, volunteering um, aspect and the services that you provide. But we want to commend you uh, right off the bat for being part of the solution. Um, that is what we are looking for because, brethren, the truth be told, um, you know, we can say all sorts of things and, and take, try to take the discussion in all type of angle. But that doesn't change the reality that there are people who are affected by, this, by the hurricane and they have genuine needs. And as a church, we are trying our best to respond. And so we are calling on all of our members to be part of the solution as we seek to bring comfort, healing, and restoration to the people of the northern part of the island of Grenada, Karaku, um, the entire island of Karaku, and the Pity Matnik. And so we are calling upon you members, um, all of our members, pastors, members, to be part of the solution as we seek to um, bring comfort and healing uh, to, to persons. Now, Pastor, as we bring the curtains down um, on this discussion, of course, I would ask the final questions and, and question, and any one of you can give a follow-up thought or anything thereafter. Um, as you go through... As persons go through various tragedies in life, you know, um, disasters, hurricanes, and so forth, um, they tend to, sometimes you would find persons who may say, um, if God has known why he allowed this, you know, blame God. Um, what would you say to a person who would probably blame God for allowing Hurricane Beryl to come and their homes were mashed up, uh, their, 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 their shops were blown away, um, you know, what, what do you say to persons, pastors? Um, Pastor Guillermo, I'll start with you. What, what would you say to such person? I, I just want to refer back to Job. Mm -hmm. You know, Job is a typical example. Mm -hmm. And um, you saw the tragedies that he went through mm -hmm. where he lost, you know, his, his, his children, he lost his, his um, livestock and all of those things. But did Job blame God? He didn't. You know, even his wife, you know, told him, why, 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 why maintain your integrity? Mm -hmm. Why don't you cause God and die? Mm -hmm. You know, and his response to her is that you speak like a foolish woman, mm -hmm. you know? So um, we know because of sin, you know, whether we are children of God or not, we will experience suffering. Bad things happen to good people as well. So we have to be mindful that as long as we live in this world of sin, um, the Bible would have already told us that we will have disasters, mm -hmm. we'll have violence and crime, and, you know, we can name it. The Bible has already told us that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, yes, as humans, you know, we may feel bad, we may feel, you know, that God has given up on us, but we can take comfort in the fact that God, I, I'm just repeating it, that God says to us that despite what we go through, he's still there for us. Amen. We can cast all our cares upon him, for he still cares for us. Amen. Pastor Gordon. Once, one of my intellectual mentors, the late Rabbi Zacharias, he once asked a question, what is a God doing on a cross? Referring to Jesus. 
and the answer he gave was that he was he was getting involved in the, the sickness and the sorrow the social sickness and the sorrow that's on planet earth that he might create the pathway back to peace the pathway back to paradise we're living in a sinful world jesus has come down to solve the problem that sin has caused why the lions rip the deers apart why the cheetah and the, and the hyena rip the little goats apart why things are out of work in nature why hurricanes come it is because we are living on a sinful planet a sin-soaked planet but jesus has already come to create the solution for us so the way of the cross leads home amen through jesus we shall have the ultimate solution in the meantime we cannot blame god for the dysfunctionality of sin we have got to understand that he is the one who is creating the solution. Amen. And this is part, all part of the great controversy mm -hmm. between good and evil. But we know that at the end. I mean, the Bible tells us who will win this war. Mm -hmm. You know, but we are caught up in the middle of this war. But we know that at the end, Jesus will win this war. Amen. My encouragement to us and to the viewers, let us remain on the winning side. Amen. Pastor. No. That's how I want to begin my comment with a passage of scripture, Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. I, it reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Verse 9 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We, we are not God. God is superior to us. And I mean, that is saying it lightly. Mm -hmm. And God himself is saying, you, we are different. You can't understand. We, we human beings can't understand some things. I'm not even sitting here pretending to understand everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because God is saying, your thoughts and my thoughts, they're different. I'm here, you down here. My ways are different from your ways. That, that, that being said, I want to, then say, the devil is a liar. That's the best. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. The devil wants to have us believe a loving God. People working hard, they're scrunting. That's a, is that a word, Pastor God? Mm, yeah, yeah. Scrunch. Yeah, no, yeah we say scrunting here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mercy, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. And then God will sit in heaven. On his throne and 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 allow the, this magnitude of disaster and you'll say so the devil wants to paint god in a very bad light and some folks buy into that and say yeah it's like what the devil said to jesus yeah jesus was in the wilderness mm -hmm. and he comes to say to him if you're the son of god of course, jesus was the son of god but he's pay, he's trying to create doubt in his mind if you're the son of god mm. then turn the stone into bread the devil is actually saying to jesus that's the best. You can't be the son of God. How, 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 how can you be the son of God and you're hungry out mm -hmm. here in the desert? Mm -hmm. Because if you are the son of, if you are mm -hmm. truly the son of God, God wouldn't have his son Correct. hungry. Correct. Yeah? Mm. The devil is doing the same thing today. Mm. If you're God's children, go in a church and you're a Christian nation and look what has happened. Evil has, you know, something evil is happening. No, the devil is a liar. The devil is the one who's responsible for all the maladies that we experience in the world. All the hurricanes and, and all of that. He is responsible. He's a liar. But, but then, when, when, as human beings, when we go through the stuff, we sit, you know, as this young lady sat on the bridge and we went, you know, and said, I just feel depressed. That's what the devil wants. You know? He wants them to feel very depressed and hopeless that you, do, you can't think of a loving God. But I repeat tonight, for the third time, the devil is a liar and God is a winner man. So despite what the devil has caused, and I must say, brethren, the, 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 the people, notwithstanding they expressed, you know, one young people in particular wanted to leave, Peter Matnik wanted to go, you know, sort of hopelessness. But the people have sh shown remarkable evidence of resilience. Amen. They're Amen. not just there, you know, wallowing. And, no, no, no. They have shown smiling, and you've seen videos of them. It's actually true. They're not, they didn't put on that. They're just, they're just thankful to God that that they're alive and they're doing what they can in a very hopeless situation i met i want to end by saying i met one of our workers one of our 
members went up there um, for his company, Grenle. And he said, that, that is not someone who are, is affected, you know. That is someone who the company sent to start looking at. And he said, Pastor, we don't know where to start. Yeah. You know? So I'm saying it's a depressive, very depressing kind of situation. Notwithstanding, the people have shown resilience and they're trusting in God. And we have to help them trust in God and give them hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Moderator, I saw a comment earlier and it is saying we need to show solidarity to our bridging in, in the island of Jamaica as well. And I, yes. that, that kind of just floats across yeah, my mind that I, we, I we should remember our brethren in Jamaica. Let them know we in Grenada, we love them and we're praying for them. Well, of course, um, we, we do um, show solidarity with all those that were affected. Um, Mexico, um, I think there were some other islands, even within the Caribbean, that were, were affected, you know. So I'm um, just saying all places that were affected, we stand in solidarity with you. And um, we know that you also stand with us. And of course, we are praying for all those areas that have been affected. Now, while Pastor Enoch was speaking, as I bring it to a close, I just want to, my mind went to a family here in Grenada who have lost a loved one just on the heels of the storm, just before. That's the Alexander family, right, um, in St. Patrick, Ma, Ma, is Made, Mali. Mali area, my days up there, right? Um, and I, I want to express condolences to that family having to deal with um, these two disasters in, in, you know, death and disasters. And um, it could be tough. And um, of course, we are praying for you as a, as a church. You know, I know your pastor has visited and I have visited and other brethren have been visiting you. And um, we pray that you would hold strong um, amidst um, this, this reality that you are faced with, holding on to the, to the um, encouragements that were given by the three pastors who are here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also, as I bring it to an end, I want to make or to um, remind us that this program was really um, done tonight, this special edition, so that we can sensitize the general public as it relates to the state of affairs uh, within um, Grenada to the northern part. Well, Grenada, um, Kariku, and Piti Matnit, as it relates to um, those countries, well, those islands being affected by um, the Hurricane Beryl. But it has also been um, produced so that all of our viewers, all of our members, all of our partners, and all of those persons who um, are willing would partner with the church in helping to bring relief uh, to those persons who have been affected by hurricane burial and as we end we encourage each one of you to be part of the solution and not be part of adding further problem or spokes in the wheel as we try to go forward so we want to encourage all of you uh, to walk along with the church and um, walk along with jesus to help make the burdens of those affected by the hurricane very light in this period having said that I want to encourage, I want to invite rather the president, Pastor Enoch Isaac, to lift uh, those affected in prayer. And Pastor, you just do that prayer, that closing prayer one time. Remember those affected by the, the hurricane and um, well, the other islands, as we would have mentioned as well. And um, just bring the curtains down for us tonight. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share the experience and to galvanize support for the cause, the mission which you have given us. Relieve suffering. Assist the needy, those who are downtrodden and depressed, O oh Lord. In a very special way, we lift all the affected persons here in Grenada, Karaku, Piti Matnik, and beyond, Union Island, and Bekwe, and Mustig, and, and, and St. Vincent, and Jamaica and Mexico and other islands, a little bit Barbados, we forgot Barbados, even a little bit St. Lucia, a lot. Wherever this hurricane um, trail was found and, 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 and lives have been disrupted, I pray for relief in the name of Jesus. And there are different levels of relief, persons are affected differently. One lady said that, that every time the slightest wind that is blows, she gets nervous because she never knew that wind was so dangerous. Lord, bring calm. Bring a, a, a soothing calm to the mind of this lady and persons like her who is now mentally troubled or emotionally troubled 
by the wind wherever it blows. So, Father, into your hands we commit them. We pray for the relief operation. We ask your blessing upon the leadership of NADMA, and, um, that government agency, and the, the, our own um, leadership here, Pastor Guillaume, who leads um, the, the, the ADRA, and Pastor Gordon, who leads the community services. We ask your blessing upon them as they, they lead and give direction to the relief effort. Father, I pray for every person, every member, every viewer, every listener. We will partner together to assist and relieve suffering. And, and of course, we'll, we'll hear from you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, we thank you for tonight for this program, this initiative. As it gets on the way, may, we, may you bless our efforts. May much resources come in so that we can accomplish the task that you have assigned us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer. Dismiss us now with your blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, panelists, and may God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath. Those of you that will be worshiping, just go out and give God praise and thanks tomorrow as you worship. God's blessings.